morning, riders and ridettes. You join me in the garage of my Airbnb here in Longmont, Colorado. Look at this. I get an entire two-car garage all to myself. Is this the dream rental or what? Returning viewers may be wondering why I've devoted all this space to just one motorcycle. Well, it's because the car that I towed it here in, my Toyota Sequoia, is just a teeny bit too long to fit in this garage. Well, it'll fit lengthwise, but once I get it in here, I can't open this door. It just hits the rear bumper. So yeah, my Kendon single stand-up motorcycle trailer that I just had to have for this trip because A, it's light enough for my Jetta to tow, and B, it doesn't take up any space in the garage. Well, it turns out that I would end up towing it with a friggin' truck and would have all the room in the world, so I may as well have brought this bike here in a 6x10 box trailer or something. Oh well, I still like having it. So folks, today is new tire day. I just rolled over 3,000 miles on my 2019 Triumph Speed Twin. Uh, yes, if you can believe it, I made it 3,000 miles on the factory Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3 tires. Uh, as you can see, they are a little square. Now, they lasted this long because I'm not a super aggressive rider, you know, I'm not pushing this bike to the limit in every single corner. And also, where I live, back home in DC, I have to ride a pretty long way on the freeway to get anywhere remotely interesting, so that's a lot of time riding on the center of the tire, and that's caused it to wear pretty flat. I could probably safely ride on these for a little while longer, but I want to change them now, because pretty soon I'm going to be going on a little mini road trip. Uh, a trip within a trip, if you will. I'll go over the route with you shortly, but first we got to go get these tires changed. Oh boy. Just like that. Yes, just like the Michelin Man. Very observant of you. The shop is about a mile away. <laughs> I would not be willing to do this for any longer than that. Oh. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. It actually snowed here in Longmont the other day. Today is September 9th, and on the 7th it snowed basically all day. And that's after it was 101 on the 5th. I don't know if that's normal for this area, but this East Coast boy could not believe it. All right, this is actually uh, kind of manageable. I'm not about to go ride in the mountains like this, but... Uh... So the tires that I'm having put on are Michelin Pilot Road 5s. Or sorry, Michelin Road 5s. They dropped the Pilot for this generation. I did not want another pair of Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3s. I think that is the wrong choice of tire for this bike. I don't know what Triumph was thinking. I would have expected them to go with the Pirelli Phantoms that they use on the Street Twin and some of their other modern classics. I think the Diablos are an optimistic choice. <laughs> I just don't think the majority of the people buying this benefit from the capabilities of this type of tire. I mean, this is almost a track tire. The Michelin Road 5s that are going on here today are a sport touring tire. But I'll talk more about what sets them apart after we get them installed, because we are just about at the shop. Look at this, you guys. Beautiful, fresh rubber, front and rear, with the little nubs on it and everything. We'll get those worn off pretty quick. If you need tires changed or work done in Longmont, Colorado, I can recommend Rolf's Motorcycle Shop. They were very nice and very fast. It took them less than an hour to get the tires changed out on my bike. But now that we've got the new rubber on, we gotta go get it scrubbed in. As you may know, new motorcycle tires are very, very smooth, and you can't achieve the maximum grip that they're designed for until you've ridden on them a bit and gotten all of their surfaces and sides scuffed up by the pavement. You always hear people say that you gotta take it easy on new tires, 
So we're going to go find some gently sweeping curves, get these tires broken in, and then I'll let you know what my thoughts are as to whether or not these are the correct tires for this bike. All right, well, they feel good so far. <laughs> Man, I haven't even ridden very far and the temperature is going down fast. I was actually a little hot this morning, but I'm heading towards the mountains where, as you can see, they're still covered in snow and fog. It'll be interesting to see just how cold it gets once I get up there. So I'm obviously not gonna provide you with a detailed owner's report of these tires today because yes, they feel great right now, but pretty much all tires feel great when they're brand new. But I will go into a little bit more detail about why I chose the Michelin Road 5 tire. Obviously, 3,000 miles is not a very long distance. So my number one priority was longevity. That means a harder rubber compound. So obviously you sacrifice a little bit of grip to get that. But thankfully these tires are what's called dual compound. So in the center, when you're you know, riding straight up and down like on a highway, the material is much harder and will last longer. But on the sides, that's the part of the tire that you use when you're really digging into the corners. So in my case, and I think most people's cases who ride on the street, the sides of the tires are used the least often, but require the most grip when they are used. So a softer compound is ideal there. Let's see, which way do I go? You know what, I've gone that way before. Let's go this way. Ah, oh, hang on, my back. Oh, man. I'm getting old. Not that old though. It was funny, when I was picking up my bike from Rolf's, his lead mechanic who did the tire change came up to me and he had to know exactly what model this bike is and where he can get one. He said that he just fell in love with it in the I think it was about five miles that he test rode it to make sure the tires were good. Said that he felt instantly at one with the bike and that everything was effortless, which I love hearing because that's exactly how I feel about it. He said that he has a couple of BSAs and an old CB750 and that this was the first new production bike in as long as he could remember that he actually wanted to buy. That warmed my heart a little bit. All right, it's getting seriously cold. It's cold and we're on brand new tires, so definitely taking it easy. So this is actually the canyon that I rode on my first ride in Colorado, uh, which you should check out that video if you haven't already. But we're going the opposite way this time, going uphill. Tires definitely feel good. The bike feels light on its feet, but still planted. The other thing I should mention is that I'm not afraid to ride in wet conditions. Now, I'm not necessarily going to grab my boots and helmet and go out the door if it's already pouring down rain. But if there's showers in the forecast for later in the day, or if I happen to get caught out in a storm while I'm already out riding, I'm not going to, you know, wait under a bridge until it's over. I'll just keep riding. There's a technique to riding safely in wet conditions, so I just use a little more caution and it's fine. And these Michelin Road 5s are designed for people who ride in just about all conditions. There's some serious rain siping going on. I actually really dig the tread pattern that they've got on here. Wow. Oh, I wish I had brought my drone today. September. Today is September 10th. Dude. <laughs> I guess they've been camping for a couple days. Uh, maybe it snowed up here again last night or something. Yeah, thankfully they don't seem to cover the road surfaces in crap around here. <laughs> Back home. As soon as there's one snowflake in the forecast, they just dump salt over all the roads. Which you know, sucks to ride on, and then once you do, that's just a recipe for rusting out the underside of your vehicle. Anyways, as I was saying, so far, 
this does seem like the right tire for this bike, especially for me. If Triumph does ever come out with a Speed Twin R, then by all means, put a Super Sport tire on that. But I think whoever decided to put those Diablo Rosso 3s on here was a little optimistic. I didn't mind those tires, they performed well, but I think that whatever level of grip I gave up when moving to these Michelins is grip that I wasn't using. I would much rather have the improved longevity and rain performance in exchange for that little bit of sportiness. Now, when Triumph does inevitably release a Speed Twin R, and I'm sure they'll put those same Diablo Rosso 3s on it, if they do at that point change the stock tire for the regular Speed Twin, I really hope that they don't go to the Pirelli Phantom that comes on the Street Twin, the T120, and I'm not sure any others, possibly the T100 as well. Uh, I had that tire on my Street Twin, and I hated that tire. The grip was terrible, whether the conditions were dry, wet, cold, or warm. So, if anyone from Triumph ever sees this, please, Pilot 5s on Speed Twins, Diablo Rosso 3s on Speed Twin Rs. And <laughs> anything but Phantoms on Street Twins. All right, we're on the side of the road up here somewhere between Lyons and Allens Park. I'm gonna show you what I mean with the pattern on these tires. So in the very, very center of the tire, that's where you have the hardest rubber compound and actually no tread. Start going outwards and that's where you need this rain siping. You know, you ride carefully in the rain, of course, you're not gonna lean all the way over to the outsides of the tire but you do need to lean a little bit, and so you find this very unique siping pattern there. These channels are where the water on the surface of the road gets pushed into so that the rubber can actually contact the asphalt and maintain grip. And we see the same scheme up front, although on the front tire, the rain siping does make it all the way to the center. The reason for that is that when you're braking, uh, most of the bike's weight shifts onto the front tire. So if you need to make an emergency stop on wet road, you are actually asking quite a bit of the center line of the front tire. So it is important to be able to get that water out of the way in that situation. Not as important on the rear tire. Um, the only time you'd really be asking for a lot of traction on this center line is under hard acceleration or when launching the bike from a stop. And I suppose Michelin does not assume you'll be doing that in wet conditions. And in my case, they assume correctly. Now we lean over a little bit further and get onto the outside of the tire. Now we're really doing some sport riding here. We're carving up those canyons, really digging into every corner and powering out as hard as we can. The tire here is a much, much softer compound and it's also almost perfectly smooth. The tread pattern really doesn't make it out here to the edge. And this is what gives us maximum grip but only in ideal sport riding conditions, which is smooth, dry tarmac, preferably on a warm day. Well, now that the feeling in my fingers is just about gone, I'm gonna turn around and head back home. But on the way, I'm gonna tell you more about that little trip I mentioned earlier. So, a trip within a trip. How is that gonna work? Well, as you know, I towed my Triumph Speed Twin here to Colorado from the Washington, D.C. area, and I'm staying in Longmont at the foot of the Rockies for about six weeks. But from this position, there's only so much of the mountains that I can access within a day's ride. So to make sure I see more of the state while I'm out here, I'm going to leave the place that I'm staying for about five days and take a trip just on the bike, packing everything I need in my saddlebags and in my backpack. I'll be doing about 250, 300 miles a day. I think the total is gonna be around 1,400 over the course of five days. I've done long days on the Speed Twin before, but never a ton in a row. And I've also taken brief trips on the Speed Twin, but never for more than one or two nights. So this is gonna be my first real test of the touring ability of this motorcycle. Without giving too much away, the plan is to go from here in Longmont 
down to an area kind of in the direction of Durango known as the Swiss Alps of America. Uh, after that, I'm going to head over to Grand Junction and I'll actually be spending more than one night there so that I can explore the town and its surrounding areas. The last day of my trip is going to be the longest by far, 400 miles from Grand Junction back here to Longmont. So yeah, given what I'm expecting of this trip, I'm really glad to have these Michelin Road 5s on my bike now. They offer all the cornering performance I'll need, safety in the conditions I'll encounter, and I won't have to stress about having them go square on me when I need to slog it for a while on the highway in between interesting locations. Okay, this truck is kicking up so much dust I cannot see. What the f- <laughs> So, of course, I am going to be making a lot of videos out of this trip, which I'm really excited about. I think I'm gonna do one installment for each day of the journey, so five total. So anyways, if you're new here, welcome. And I hope that if that trip sounds interesting to you, whether you want to find out what a capable tour the Speed Twin is, or if you just want to follow along with the adventure, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button. And for all my returning viewers and regular commenters, I appreciate you guys. I really do. I read every single comment, and as much as I enjoy making these videos just for the sake of working on them, it is nice to see that there's an audience and to know that I'm not just shouting into the void. Anyways guys, wherever you are, I hope that the riding weather is nice and I hope that I'll see you back here for the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.